Morning, everybody. Eric Chaconis here for PT on Ice. And today we want to dive into the topic of diagnostic ultrasound. I think there's a lot of neat applications and the future of diagnostic ultrasound is really bright for us as physical therapists. So I um, want to give you guys some resources and show you a few different uh, things that can maybe spark your interest. You can look into it further. By no means is uh, is this intended to be a comprehensive discussion on diagnostic ultrasound? I just want to kind of spark some discussion, really. And the, the reason is be because the cost has gone down so much. And so I think, you know, this has been a major barrier for us in clinical practice for a long, long time because the cost of the machine is so high. And then you have this issue where you're not really going to get directly, or most people, probably most physical therapists won't get uh, reimbursed for you. It won't be part of your, your billing. And so um, just as an overview, diagnostic ultrasound, you know, we, we, for a long, long time, I remember when I was in PT school, primarily was used to look at the abdominal wall for biofeedback, for muscular training. Back then, you know, 2004, core stabilization training was really popular. And so uh, you could use it to kind of retrain somebody's abdominal muscles and, and it's still used today in pelvic floor biofeedback and stuff like that. But that's not what we're talking about here today. We're talking about using it to actually look at the soft tissues to try and identify uh, pathology, look at tissue and, and rule out in a lot of ways, rule out tissue damage, look at tendons and muscles and stuff like that. So the sound probe essentially emits, it, it sound, the, the electricity is created by the machine and it's emitted through the sound probe, which basically sends a sound wave into the tissue. That sound wave bounces off the tissue, comes back and is read by the probe. It's read by the sound head and that's what gives you the image. So the image is showing you varying densities of tissues. And so you can identify muscles, the fascial layers, tendons, uh, really with great clarity. A lot of the newer units have very high resolution and it's incredible how accurate they can be in, in picking up soft tissue uh, injuries. So this is what I've recently been working with and this is called Butterfly IQ, which is a portable sound head that you would just plug into your phone. So you can use it with your smartphone. It only works with Mac, uh, with, with the iPhone uh, or the iPad, but you can use it in a portable nature, which is really neat. The other neat thing is just how cheap it is. So it's under $2,000 that you can get one of these for. And so I think the whole ROI reimbursement uh, versus cost of the machine thing is, is help. You know, that argument is, is a little bit improved when you're talking about a machine that's that inexpensive because it's the same price, you, you know, you might purchase a, a piece of equipment for your, for your gym or something like that in the clinic. The, um, the training is, is probably the next key component to it, right? Because this is very much user dependent and your ability to see objects is really dependent on your, your training. And so um, there's a few different things that are out there that I want to kind of highlight. First of all, I want to, I want to just mention there is a, the RMSK, you'll see this after some people's name, the RMSK certification is a uh, certification that is available to physical therapists. So you can see here the list of practitioners. You'll see this primarily with medical doctors. You'll see sports medicine doctors, in some cases surgeons, family practice, sports med, as well as radiologists who hold the RMSK certification. But some physical therapists hold it as well. So you can see here you can have a DPT or a PT degree, and you can sit for this certification. And you have to meet certain requirements. You have to have 150 uh, studies in the last 36 months that you submit in kind of a portfolio. You have to sit for the exam. It's a very rigorous and challenging exam. And so anyway, that is a kind of a neat, <coughs> um, you know, ob obviously level of training that some people have. You'll see some physical therapists. This is Colin Rigney from LinkedIn. Uh, I don't know Colin personally, but I, I, I follow him on LinkedIn. And he is a physical therapist that exclusively practices utilizing diagnostic ultrasound. It's one of the things that he does on a day-to-day -day basis and gets paid for it. So he holds that RMSK certification. Really great person to follow on LinkedIn. He posts um, neat cases uh, of different you know, injuries that he's seeing in the clinic with ultrasound. And, um, and it, it's just a great learning. He's, he's a great resource from a learning perspective. 
Other things that are out there, John Jacobson really is the uh, authority in diagnostic ultrasound, in my opinion. John Jacobson is somebody, he is a radiologist at a University of Michigan. He has written the authority, the book on musculoskeletal ultrasound, and he teaches courses on it. This book is, is incredible. He, he goes over really scanning techniques, kind of very thorough, comprehensive way to scan <clears throat> every joint in the body. And on here, he also has a lot of the different uh, handouts from his courses. So he shows you in, in these handouts, you know, this is the one that I, I took. Uh, he shows you really how to go through what to look for, different pathologies, scanning uh, techniques and stuff like that, which is really quite neat. So anyway, I highly recommend, if you can take a course from him, I highly recommend that. He teaches courses that are usually multidisciplinary. Uh, they're available to physicians, PAs, PTs, nurse practitioners. Uh, really, really great course. I honestly can't say I've ever taken a course and, and heard a better presenter. The way that he presents and the way that he engages and keeps your attention and makes it very, very interesting and you learn a ton. Uh, the course that I took was actually in St. Petersburg, Florida, at Gulf Coast Ultrasound Institute. World-class faculty. Um, everybody kind of goes over, they'll go over the normal anatomy for a joint, how to scan that joint, and then the next person will come in and go over pathology, and then you break out into a lab where a couple of you are taking turns practicing the techniques on a, a patient. Um, so that's kind of a really neat uh, resource as far as courses go. And then another free resource for you is the European Society of Musculoskeletal Radiology, the ESSR they publish these technical guidelines for all the different joints. And so you can download these for free and same thing. If you had access to a machine to be able to practice and go through all the different techniques and scanning, you know, what to look for and all that. Because like I said, it is very much user dependent. Um, the way that I'm using it in the clinic right now with, with the Butterfly IQ and some of the other machines that we have is really when it's not when it when it's part of the physical exam for me. So I'm not doing a complete exam. I'm not trying to uh, bill for this. I'm using it as an adjunct to my physical exam. When something just isn't totally clear, when I'm curious uh, about a specific tendon or ligament or a joint, you know, in some cases I look at the recesses around the knee to determine how much knee effusion is in the knee. It just adds to the clinical picture and it helps treatment decision making. In some cases, I can more confidently move forward with a loading program because I've ruled out a tendon tear. In some cases, I hold, scale things back or, or, or you know, don't, don't quite do as much because I'm noticing a lot of joint effusion around a knee, for example, or something like that. So it's just simply a, a small adjunct, something that I can do in real time with movement. And that's the real benefit here when you compare ultrasound to MRI is this can be done in real time I can compare bilaterally right there at the bedside right away, and I can do it uh, under the, the movements or the aggravating functional activities that the patient's experiencing. So if they have pain during push-ups, I can put the sound head on the shoulder, have them do a push-up, and I can see the way the supraspinatus moves, or I can see the way the biceps moves as they're doing the push-up, which sometimes helps clue us in to, to different things. So just wanted to do, th do that as a little bit of a starting point, kind of a little bit of a um, sort of get, get people thinking about this a little bit more. If you have any questions or, or any more um, discussion or, 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 or comments that you want to make, feel free to make them there in the comment box. I am going to link all these different um, resources that I've shown here. I'll link those in the comments below so that you guys can, can check that out as well. All right. Have a great day, everybody.